Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Alex Budd, fellow TBN networker. Um, and that's where we first met Alex at, at TBN, the Boardroom Network. Um, and we're going to talk about mental health today, which is something Alex has been scratching his head about, what we're going to talk about. Um, but we've had a few thoughts. So over to you, Alex. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks very much for the introduction and having me on today. Um, yeah, mental health. I mean, as, as most of you guys know, what I do for a living is very much uh, entwined with mental health, uh, offering private medical insurance to you know, individuals, companies and families. And a big part uh, of that these days is mental health. Um, and keep up the good work, Sandy, because guess what? Going back a few years ago, it wasn't a major part of the policy in any which way. Um, so it's all kind of come to light. And um, as we briefly discussed a second ago before we went on air, uh, certainly thinking back to, to my corporate days, mental health awareness only really came about in the last couple of years. Um, certainly before it was something which you kind of hid um, and didn't openly speak about. It was certainly um, in the engineering world where I, I was kind of focused, um, almost a sign of weakness. Yeah. and, and Within the men's fraternity anyway. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. And, and I think that's terrible. And it, it's for me, it's all about starting the conversation. Um, but why do you think that some men find it so hard to have that conversation about how they feel? Um, I, I think uh, I'm not sure whether it's generational. I mean, I just turned 40 the other day. Uh, and certainly when I was growing up, you were never educated to kind of um, be open about your thoughts and feelings. Mm. Um I don't know. I mean, looking back at my history, um, I was educated, I went off to university and what have you. And, and during the time where I went off to university, I was uh, involved in construction. So I was um, a, a builder's labourer for a, a good few years to put me through education. Um, and the blokes there certainly never talk about their feelings. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, throughout my career, uh, as you're aware, I worked overseas. I worked in Oz for, for, for nearly 12 years. Um, you know, where the men are men kind of thing. And yeah. uh, you don't necessarily talk about your feelings too, too much over there as well. Um, so I don't, I don't know, Sally. I, I, think, um, I think it's great that they are doing it now. Um, but I certainly think, yeah, there was a stigma attached, um, you know, going back a few years. Mm. And I think it's interesting because I get that construction workers don't do yoga any more than bus drivers do. Um, and I think it's something that, that slowly but surely we, we need to change. Um, and I know that your life has actually been touched by suicide as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, yeah, I, 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 one of my uh, quite outspoken, quite outgoing um, friends, um, yeah, decided to take his own life, which was completely out of character uh, and unbeknown to uh, everybody involved. And um, I mean, I've known... A handful of people who, who have kind of openly come out and have admitted their depression and what have you and what's uh, very evident from 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 my side is you'd never you'd never think it um you know they're generally quite outgoing not wanting to generalize but uh, they're, they're certainly in the cases which i've known they're prominent business people quite outgoing um and you just wouldn't wouldn't go oh yeah they would be my definition if you will of uh, mm -hmm. having uh, issues it's funny isn't it because sometimes we look at that um not in line with criminals but sometimes you, you look at a criminal and you think oh he doesn't look like a criminal and but it, it's kind of the same with things like depression and anxiety you look at somebody that says yes actually I suffer from depression and you think oh they don't strike me as the type of person to suffer from depression no it is um it is strange you know and I've you know I've had people quite close to me kind of come out and uh, and say that they have struggled um and yeah, I, I guess, look, from my perspective, it's, it's, it's quite difficult. I, you know, I've never, never, uh, you know, suffered in that, in that way. Um, I've been quite fortunate, um, but I'm all, certainly always open to the conversation. You know, one of my best mates suffers with it. And I often catch up, you know, during the lockdown, we'd have a chin wag once every two weeks. Um, and I'm looking forward to catching up with him, um, you know, in the next couple of weeks when we can do face to face. And I don't know why, but over a few beers, um, you know, you can have a proper conversation and, you um, I guess the um, taboos are kind of lifted a little bit after you, you kind of loosen up. So I, I need to ask you, the, the first time your mate said to you, look, I'm not feeling on top of the world. What was your kind of gut reaction? How did you feel? 
because like you say you come from that that generation where it's kind of like man up pull your bootstraps up and get on with it um so so what was your reaction um my reaction it's more inquisitive than anything i certainly didn't uh, make prejudgment. Um, I mean, the chap in question, he's he's had it pretty tough, to be fair. It's my age, but um, yeah, he's he's always had it pretty difficult. Um, and I think it's just a combination of a whole host of things that just really gotten him down. Um, so I guess in that position, what was my job? It was my job to, have, say, have a drink with him, have a good conversation, try and get to the bottom of it. Because, uh, you know, certainly a problem, uh, a problem shared is a problem halved um, and all that sort of caper. And that's why I guess for, for people who have been uh, suffering with mental health issues over the last 12, 14 months, it's been so difficult because you can't just nip out and go and see someone and have a chat. And I don't know about yourself, but over the phone, yeah, it's powerful, but it's not quite the same. No, no, you're right. It's not. You, you can have those conversations, but it, it doesn't quite mean as much. And but it's interesting you say that you felt that it was your role just to listen and, and try and get to the bottom of it with him. And I think this is something that a lot of people don't understand around conversations to do with mental health. If somebody comes to you and says that I'm feeling down or I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling anxious. It's not about curing that person. It's not about fixing that person because you can't. But very often, 50% of it is just supporting that person, just understanding and just being there to listen to them. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, hundred percent. It's look. I'm not a doctor. I'm not trained in this field in any which way. Um, so you know, have, do I vary my technique? No, my techniques remain the same. You know, have a conversation, have a chat. Let's have a let's find out. You know, what's been going on? What's the drama? Because you know, as I said a minute ago, a problem shared. Sometimes it's not that big a deal mm. if you talk about it. As our good friend Bob Oskin said, what did he say? It's good to talk. <laughs> because you know you get it off your chest didn't you otherwise Absolutely. you kind of bottle it up bottle it up bottle it up and what happens when you do that it explodes and um yeah sometimes you know as i said uh, the, the the chap who sadly took his life um i dare say he was doing that for years and years and years and years it become too much and you know kind of was the easy way out mm. absolutely and and i mean it's such a shame that, that people are driven to that point when like you say really it's not rocket science neither of us are therapists neither of us are counsellors but we do recognize the importance of talking and the importance of saying are you okay no actually seriously are you okay rather than just like oh i'm fine and blah 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 yeah and funny you should say that are you okay because that's where my first um experience of mental health and what have you came about um so i, I was working for again a large engineering company and and in Australia, they have you have a day called Are You OK Day. So all the corporates kind of brand their stuff and all that. It's quite powerful. Um, yeah, but um, you know, maybe if they don't already have something in this country, they should look at doing something similar. That, that I know we've got like Mental Health Week, idea. obviously. Um, and I must just say, Sandy, before I depart, unbeknownst to myself, um, the wife signed me up to do 100 miles. So I've been doing a bit of walking of late, uh, walking and jogging. We're doing 100 miles for Mind in May. It's like a yeah uh, a thing in magic so uh yeah i mean again a great cause and I, I didn't even understand what they were about until um the wife told me as i said i'm doing a, a catch up with yourself she was like oh yeah you should mention that i was like all right well excellent good luck with that to both of you thank you so much for joining me today um and just everybody out there just remember please talk have a conversation um and on that note have a great day thanks sandy keep up the good work take care